Hello students, Miss Roll here with your second Simple Machines Notes video. Again, our learning targets for these videos is I can identify the six types of Simple Machines and I can describe how Simple Machines make work easier. So first, what is a wheel and axle? Got some pictures over here. The wheel and axle is a large wheel attached to a smaller wheel or rod that is called the axle. How does a wheel and axle work? The axle or rod runs through the center of the wheel. So when the axle goes around once, the wheel goes around once. This lifts or moves the object. So you'll notice the axle is smaller than the wheel. So it's fairly easy to spin or move that, but then it moves something bigger. So again, it's changing that force uh, that you have to apply, making you do less work. Here are some examples. So you'll notice in the center of all of these spinning wheels, um, there's kind of a dot. That is our axle. So what we don't see in these pictures, because uh, there's not a ton of great uh, images that I could find, is we have our axle spinning as well, that is spinning the larger object. Okay, so in here we have things spinning. Uh, down here on the left with the guy on the bicycle having a bit of an unfortunate moment. There we have the axle disconnecting as the wheel continues to spin. But again, the big wheel, is turning once with a small axle on the inside turning. In our picture of this kitten in a washing machine, they are turning the big wheel, which is also turning the center, our axle, that small point. On the other end, uh, the motor inside would be spinning just the axle, which causes the whole big wheel to turn. What is a wedge? A wedge is shaped like a triangle, and a wedge allows you to separate things or hold them in place. So an example of separating would be this axe. An example of holding in place would be like a doorstop. A wedge can either be made of one or two inclined planes. This one has one, one slanted, one straight side of the triangle or two inclined planes. Both of these are slanted here. So how does the wedge work? The slanted slide sides are put between objects. So in the case of our ax here, it's going in between uh, parts of the wood. And here it's going between the door and the floor. And then the applied force will either split something apart or hold something in place. So in the case of our log, it is splitting or pushing the two sides of the log apart. And in the case of the door, it's applying a force up and a force down because it's slanted, but that is causing the door to not move, right? It's holding it in place. So here are um, some images or GIFs of it in action. We have a wedge being uh, slammed into a log there. You'll notice that as it goes down, it is pushing the wood apart. So that is a wedge. Um, knives, knives, all kinds of knives like that are examples of wedges as well. The sharp side is uh, the skinnier side and it kind of slants out uh, to the top of the knife. And again, it is splitting things apart by applying a force outwards. And our last simple machine, what is a screw? So the screw is a combination of a ramp and an inclined plane. So a screw reduces the amount of force used. Now let's think about how it works. There's an inclined plane wrapped around a pole which holds thing to things together or lifts objects. It may help to think of the threads of the screw as a type of circular ramp or inclined plane. 
right? If you were a little tiny person walking along the threads of this screw, you'd be going up. You're going a very far distance to go up the total length of the screw, but you're doing less force because instead of just like climbing up it. So here are a couple of gifts to kind of show you as you can watch as our inclined plane goes as the screw turns, right? You can kind of follow it up. It's this long path, but means that the force that you are applying to push the screw in doesn't have to be as much, right? It's a lot easier to put in a screw than say a nail. And that's because of these threads. And that, oh, we got one more slide, almost forgot. Efficiency. This is another thing we talk about with simple machines. So efficiency is a measurement of the force lost when doing work. So no machine is 100% efficient because we have friction. As we studied before, we know that friction uh, causes uh, heat oftentimes. Um, so basically it's some of that energy, some of that force that you are applying being lost. So nothing is 100% efficient, but the more efficient it is, it means the less force is going to other things than what it is supposed to be doing. So again, that's another uh, phrase we will use to talk about simple machines. If you missed anything, pause, go back. Uh, make sure your notes are all filled out and ask your teacher if you have any questions. Hope you all have a wonderful day.